Can you outrun a bad diet? Let's take a look at what the experts say. Hello, fellow geeks, and welcome back to Running Geek Girl. My name is Heather, and I am glad you are here today. So, you've probably heard the saying before that you can't outrun a bad diet. But let's talk a little bit more about what that means for you. We're going to be taking a look at an article from CNN Health written by Jocelyn Solis Moriera about what happens if you exercise but don't eat well. I'm going to have a link to the original article down in the description below if you would like to check out the information for yourself. So, let's say that you're training for a marathon, but you regularly get fast food for dinner dinner. Or maybe you are tracking what you're eating just during the week, but you kind of binge on the weekends. Or maybe you work out and run all the time and you tend to snack all the time. When you are running, and especially when you're getting into higher mileage, it's really tempting to just eat whatever you want because the more you run, the hungrier you get. We all know that. And you can convince yourself that it's going to be easy to burn off in your next run session. But the reality is that it doesn't matter if you work out longer, if you go at a higher intensity, you can't not reverse the effects of a bad diet. You may have heard the term on social media called skinny fat, and that is a person that actually looks fairly slim, but they do have a higher percentage of body fat. You could be the type of person that works out and runs all the time and not be able to pinch any fat anywhere on your body. That's what's called subcutaneous fat, which is right underneath the first layer of skin but you could still have a lot of what is called visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat that surrounds the organs deep inside your body. Now the article talks a lot about an interview with Dr. Colin Carricker. He's an exercise physiologist and associate professor of health and human performance at High Point University in North Carolina. He warns that visceral fat is much more dangerous than the outer layer of fat that you may see on someone's body. That visceral fat can get into your system and circulate throughout the body. A lot of this causes a disease that's called atherosclerosis. And these are the types of blockages that lead to heart attacks and strokes. Now this buildup of visceral fat is caused by a diet that is high in sugar, carbs, and salt. If you have a higher level of visceral fat deep within your body, then you are at the exact same type of risk as a person with obesity. There was also a large study done on the connection between the quality of your diet and how much exercise you do. And researchers found that even if you regularly exercise but ate whatever you want, you still were at a more increased risk for premature death than the people who both watched their diet and regularly exercised. So why is it you can't outrun a bad diet, especially if you're trying to lose weight through running? Now, of course, if you're wanting to lose weight, you're going to want to follow the classic formula of burning off more calories than you are taking in. And of course, if you're making the wrong choices in what goes into your body, you're overconsuming calories and you're never going to have a calorie deficit. Now you may think that the obvious answer to that is going to be just to do more exercise in order to offset the calories that you took in. The only problem is all of those fatty and overprocessed foods are filled with what are called empty calories. These are not the kind of things that are going to nourish your muscles and your body and carry you through your next workout. And so what happens is although your belly was full, you are going into your next workout running on fumes. It's just like a car that ran out of gas. You don't have the actual energy that your body needs in order to carry you through a more intense or longer workout. And when you have a lack of things like protein and fiber and vitamins filling you up, then those empty calories are going to just make you more hungry as they're being digested. And so researchers found that people who ate empty calories were still hungry, moody, and less motivated to exercise when it came down to it. So even if you do find the motivation to go and work out again, empty calories make it harder to make it a productive workout session. Now, according to Caroline Susie, who is a registered dietitian and a spokesperson for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, Fatty foods give you a temporary boost of energy right at the very beginning, but it's not enough to maintain a long or high intensity run. You will tend to burn out sooner and any of the calories that are not burned off are going to be stored in the body as fat. So it doesn't matter if you are stepping up the length or the intensity of your run, if you're not getting the right nutrients, it's not going to make a difference. If you're strength training, you're going to burn more calories than when you do cardio, but it's harder to build muscle mass and fully recover if you are eating poor quality foods. Does this mean that you can never eat ice cream again? 
I really hope not because I happen to really love ice cream. So it doesn't mean that you have to give up all the foods that you enjoy eating. It's very easy to develop an unhealthy relationship with food, to label foods as good or bad or feeling like you can't have any carbs, you can't have any sugar. You can start developing a sort of toxic relationship around eating. So instead of feeling guilty about having to stop and get fast food sometime or for choosing to get a dessert after dinner, just try to shift your perspective. Think of food not in terms of calories but the type of fuel that it is providing. So start looking at the quality of the food that you are eating. Is what you're eating going to give you enough fiber? Are you getting enough healthy carbs? Are you getting enough protein in order to help your body recover between runs? So try not to think about food as good or bad. Try not to think about what you are taking away from your diet but think about what you are going to add to your diet in order to give your body the type of fuel that it needs in order to make it through your next workout. So there you go. There's just a quick look at why you can't outrun a bad diet. Now this is something that I struggle with a lot and I know probably a lot of you struggle a lot with this as well. The easiest thing is to just look at what you're eating one day at a time or sometimes just one meal at a time. I personally try not to do two bad meals in a row. If I mess up and I eat too much sugar or too many carbs or something like that, then I just tell myself that I will make it up to myself on the next meal. Try not to have two bad ones in a row. But what are some of the things that you do in order to make sure that you keep your nutrition on track? Why don't you share your tips down in the comments below? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just click the button down below. It doesn't cost you a thing and it keeps you up to date on all the running content I have coming out all the time. You could also give this video a big thumbs up. Both of those get me out to more runners just like you. You can also follow me on social media. All the links are down in the description. You can find me across all platforms under the name Running Geek Girl. Thanks so much for being here. I'm so glad you could join me. Remember to laugh hard, run fast, and be kind. I'll see you later.